Hello, this is Joyce Latimer from Virginia Tech, and today we're going to talk about PGRs for perennials with a focus on perovskia atroplosifolia. Thanks again to Fine Americas for sponsoring these videos and to eGro for hosting them. When we talk about PGRs for perovskia, we're mostly talking about the straight species. There are a few cultivars around, but all of the studies that I'm going to describe to you today were done with the straight species. And this is a compilation of research we've done over the years with different PGRs. And I'll give you a summary at the end of what we found. First of all, when we talk about perovskia, it does have a very upright growth habit. It's a very vigorous grower. And of course that production time typically under warm long days enhances that vigor. Plus it, since it is such a fast grower we have a very short production time. In other words it finishes very quickly so we need to keep control of it while we have it in the greenhouse or the nursery. Be aware that the rates I'm going to give you are southern rates so adjust those for your own area of the country. First of all, let's talk about dayside or dimenazide. Dimenazide has been very effective on perovskia. Again, we're talking about multiple applications, at least two applications. In this case, we had good control up to six weeks after application with two applications at two-week intervals. We had a similar response with dayside two applications at four weeks after treatment in this study, we also tested the tank mix of 5,000 parts per million dayside plus 1,500 parts per million citadel or chloramiquat chloride. You can see the tank mix also gave us good control. This was a single application of the tank mix. You will probably want to be ready and aware of your growth control and be ready to make a second application if necessary. We also looked at different methods of application of PGRs to perovskia, in this case using paclobutrazole. You can see our control is the first one, and then we used a spray application of 60 parts per million. This was a single application at label recommended volume. We compared that to a sprinch application, which was four times the label recommended volume at one quarter of the rate. So we gave the same amount of active ingredient as we did with the spray, but more of that active ingredient was concentrated in the root zone where it was more available to the plant. So a little more control with the sprinch than we had with the spray. We also compared that to a watering in treatment where the plant was irrigated with 10 parts per million paclobutrazole at each irrigation. This application does require a significant amount of experience on the part of the applicator. So it's one you would have to be very careful with if you're not very familiar with your plant materials and the amount of growth control you get with different plant growth regulators and different rates. We also compared this to a liner soak, and I'll show you a little bit more on liner soaks later. You can see that 15 parts per million gave us excessive stunting in this case. We also compared a media spray. Paclobutrazoles are labeled for application to the media surface prior to planting. So we used a 30 part per million media spray before the plants were planted. You can see that we didn't have quite enough control with, a, with that 30 part per million rate. You'll probably want to increase that rate if you want to do media applications. We did a little more work with the paclobutrazol liner soaks. And this is perovskia at five weeks after treatment. And you can see that we did rates up to from two to 10 parts per million. And remember that the goal of a liner soak is to give you early control of very vigorous crops. But it also is intended to give what we call baseline control. In other words, it may or may not last the entire growing season, but it gets you through that early season. You can come back with additional growth regulation if you need to. In this case, we looked at the plants again at eight weeks after the application, eight weeks after planting. And you can see with paclobutrazol, we still have pretty good control with four to six parts per million. But again, we could use lower rates to give us early control and come in with additional applications to give us finished control. Borovsky has also been very responsive to uniconazole, giving us a very linear reduction in growth in response to increasing rates of uniconazole. We also looked at methods of application on perovskia with our uniconazole. You can see we used a 15 part per million spray compared to a 4 part per million sprench. In this case the spray was a little more effective. Our watering in treatment with a 2.5 part per million PGR application gave us also less control. Again, 
application frequency and outline volume are going to affect the amount of control that we get. Again, our liner soak was excessive and our media spray was also insufficient to give us the kind of control we were looking for. So these rates would need to be increased. When we looked at uniconazole liner soaks, we used lower rates than we did with the paclobutrazole using one to five parts per million. You can see that at five weeks after treatment, the rates at three part per million and above gave us excessive stunting. Looking at those same plants, at eight weeks after treatment, you can see that we still have good control with the two part per million application. Higher rates did give us excessive stunting. So as far as our recommendations for PGRs on Perovskia, we can recommend Dayside at 5,000 parts per million, and that will require multiple applications at 10 to 14 day intervals, depending on growth. You may also use the Dayside Citadel tank mix at 5,000 parts per million Dayside plus 1,500 parts per million Citadel. And again, you may need multiple applications of that. When we talk about Piccolo or Piccolo 10XC, we did have a little bit of variability in our response to Piccolo sprays. Typically 60 parts per million gave good control. Some experiments it took a little more than that. So I would start with 60 parts per million, but be aware you may need to make multiple applications. However, if we wanted to look at liner soaks, we had very good response in that two to six part per million range. So that may be a good application method to give you early control of Perovskia. And with Concise, we also found good control with spray applications of 15 to 30 parts per million. But again, you may need multiple applications to get control throughout the production season. In addition, the Concise liner soak was very effective at 1 to 2 parts per million, depending on how long you wanted that control to last. So in summary, Perovskia is very responsive to many of our PGRs, but that growth response may not persist long enough to get you throughout the production season. So multiple applications may be necessary. Early applications are an excellent idea because this is a very vigorous grower. So thanks again to Fine Americas and eGrow for this video. Have a great day.